So welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today we're talking about automation and innovation in the hemp and cannabis industry. We are here live at the World Trade Center. I'm here with Arner and Denny. They're with Green Vault Systems. I'm here with Jason of 420 Wholesale Pack. And then there's Andy of Poseidon Asset Management. Um, Andy, I wanted to ask you a follow-up question to that. Um, How often are you seeing companies capitalizing on advances in Mm -hmm. our automated technologies? So it's a great question, and and really the simple answer is not enough. Um, it's actually something I, I wrestle with as um, you know, sort of an investor and and uh, you know individual in the space. Um, it, you, you hear the story all the time: a, a uh, you know a software engineer from Google quits his job and wants to produce an edibles uh, branded edibles company out of, out of his kitchen. Um, well, I totally applaud the entrepreneurialism and and, and the spirit and the drive. Um, you know, that's not something that, that that's actually durable and, and, and will work in this industry in five or 10 years when, um, you know, especially as we, as we look at safe banking and, and I think eventually the States Act, um, there are so many people waiting at the sidelines. There, there's the Coca-Cola's of the world. There's the Hershey's of the world. These massive players that want to come in and bring in this truly institutional, um, you know, established technology. And, 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 and again, to the point about efficiency and optimization, um, essentially blow these guys out of the water. Um, so again, so the simple answer is it, it, it's not happening enough, but I, I think increasingly people are recognizing that, uh, you know, if you want to produce an edible, um, you know, producing in a small batch kitchen is, is, is not durable. And, it, and it's going to be about producing, um, you know, full production lines and competing with, with true institutional players, um, just like in any other market. Um, in the grand scheme of things, cannabis, uh, especially as it applies to manufactured goods, is just an ingredient. And um, and by ingredient, I, I'm, I mean a commodity. And and, and that will come down and eventually it will be treated as such and it'll kind of lose this this uh, uh, this kind of cannabis bump that, that that so many products do currently receive where they're able to to sell products um, that, that wouldn't necessarily exist in a truly mature market um, so I, I think it's coming but it's it's slow and uh, and, and I, I think you know some of the catalysts in the forefront are going to be you know safe banking which is going to really bring institutional capital it's going to bring in serious investors um, and that serious capital just like what we're seeing up in Canada, it's going to allow the U.S. based entrepreneurs to to begin pursuing these this, these true institutional machines, which uh, we're going to dive into that very, uh, major factor um, that that's going to change the game. I think more than anything else, maybe even more than um, machinery and automation. I think the the fact that people can get access to traditional banking services is going to allow them to gain access to the lending, uh, the financing, uh, to scale and even compete. So, yeah, we'll get to that in, in uh, a little bit. Um, awesome. And how often are you seeing companies trying to capitalize on advances in manufacturing technologies like your pre-roll machine? Well, the industry is so new. Everybody is uh, looking for new technologies. Uh, this is not an industry which has mass manufacturing. Uh, this is not an industry which has a history of you know, the big, uh, you know, big manufacturing uh, or even huge companies. Uh, being involved, and all of a sudden, uh, they both have to, uh, the quality of the product, consistent product, uh, standards is a local, national, or even international standards, uh, once you're into the field of medical, uh, medical, uh, products. Uh, this is all, this is all, you know, only a few years old, so, uh, new manufacturing technologies, uh, especially as we've come to it at Hephaestus, which is a company which has been in the food packaging industry, for about 30 years. Uh, now this is not, not new, uh, but it is new for the cannabis manufacturers. Yeah, I, I've, I was on the phone with the FDA. They're coming up with some new requirements for all manufacturers of uh, combustibles or inhalables like cigars, joints, cigarettes, and they're going to have requirements, which to my surprise, they didn't already. That's what I, I called them initially is to find out what are the required materials to manufacture uh, combustibles and they didn't have any, but they are creating them. So I think if you're using stainless steel and other, you know, uh, non plastics, essentially, I think you'll be fine. Well, the machine is built to food grade. Those are the machines, you know, it's like I said, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a lot of surprise here for us. Right. You know, we, for example, have a, uh, a little device that prints on the cone and, you know, it's all, uh, edible inks. Uh, so, you know, there's, uh, so the food industry has been ahead of this for a long time. I don't think the FDA is going to be inventing too much, which will surprise people who are familiar with the food industry. 
I would agree with that. And with that, I really appreciate uh, you all being here with me today. Uh, uh, so with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is your Cannabis Business Podcast, The Talking Hedge. Like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out.